Hello and welcome to Street View. In this video I'm going to talk about my cameras and some of the settings I use for my street photography. I'm going to discuss the system I prefer and how my simple setup results in the pictures I get. I'll be honest, I'm not really the sort of photographer who is particularly interested in cameras and their specifications per se. Once I've found a camera I like, I tend to stick with it. For me, the chief characteristics are that it's lightweight, feels comfortable to hold, and is easy to use. Ever since I started out back in the 1980s with an Olympus OM10, I've tended to prefer smaller bodied cameras and lenses. I don't want to feel as though I'm carrying a camera the whole time, and I want to forget about it until I need to use it. I've also talked before about keeping a low profile and not obviously appearing as a photographer when I'm on the streets. This means the lenses I use are usually of a fixed focal length. I do have a small zoom lens, but I don't really want to be thinking about zooming and changing the focal length while I'm trying to compose an image. I found it a bit of a distraction. I'd much rather change my physical position or distance from the subject. I'm pretty quick on my feet and when my brain tells me to move, I move. Although I'm not denying I have had some close calls with buses over the years. So, to the cameras and lenses themselves. Over the last few years I've mainly been using two cameras. First is the Olympus EM5. I absolutely love this camera. This is my second as I wore the first one out. A couple of bits fell off and some of the buttons stopped working, through overuse I must add. I love it because of the two things I've already mentioned. Those being the size, it perfectly fits in my hands and it's very comfortable to hold. And I don't find myself hitting buttons all the time. The lens I mainly use with it is a Panasonic 20mm Pancake f1.7, which I think is equivalent to a 40mm in 35mm terms. It is a little beauty, one of the best I've ever bought. It adds no weight to the camera and is extremely responsive, even when shooting at night. I've been an Olympus user for many years, but when the time came for an upgrade this time, I decided to go for a Fuji X-T30. I have no regrets, as it has lived up to its billing. Another mirrorless camera and another that is on the smaller side and comfortable to hold. I have the 15 to 45 mm Fuji lens, which is very sharp, light, and although it is a zoom lens, it's very small. I also have the Fuji XF 27 mm f2.8. I'm using the Fuji camera most of the time now, as it is very good for video too. Anyway, both these cameras have suited my needs perfectly and I can recommend them. In terms of the exposure settings I use when I'm photographing the streets, it's really quite simple. Firstly, the most important factor is the quality of the light. I can't stress this enough. The sun has to be high and bright, just like we get in spring and early summer. If you're going for the high contrast style, you'll be looking for clean, bright highlights and deep, dark shadows. If I'm wanting to do this style of photography, I won't even go out if the light isn't right, because I know I won't get those highlights and shadows. If you get that bit right, then everything else should fall into place. Certainly in black and white images, you'll get good tones across the range. When photographing in these conditions, I will generally underexpose a little, perhaps by a third of a stop or so, and then I'll expose for the highlights and the brightest parts of the scene. I think pure whites can be beautiful in some images, but it's best not to blow the highlights when shooting, as that way you'll have more control over them afterwards if you want to make any adjustments. I use a small aperture of around f16, because I like to have full sharpness in this kind of image, as I believe it gives it more stature. The next two pictures will illustrate this. This picture of a young woman sitting on some steps obviously has a bold geometric look, and I felt that too much detail in the shadow areas would detract from this. The style and simplicity of the scene is enhanced by the limited number of tones in it. Deep blacks are good for concealing unwanted detail in this type of photography. In this picture, there are fewer shadow areas which helps to give more prominence to the walking man. Even though he appears as a small and almost fragile subject, he is not competing with anything for attention. The lines help to contain him and almost guide him on his journey. In both these pictures I would have been shooting with an aperture of around f16. Bright conditions allow you to do this as there is plenty of available light. Here, the shadow of the central door area was allowed to darken as it helped emphasise the shadows of the tree branches. This was achieved by exposing for the brickwork behind the figure, who is subframed by the arching shadow of the branch. This picture was part of a series about geometry in the city, and so the lines were important. The trick here was not to allow the large shadow areas to become too heavy, which would have concealed the road lines and brickwork detail. I exposed for a road area closer to the pavement, 
where there was more light until I got the right balance, again with full sharpness. Same technique here, so as to retain detail in the man's legs, which I didn't want to lose in the shadow. Play around with your exposure areas until you find the balance you are looking for. Thanks very much for watching. I hope this will prove useful for you if you're looking to do this kind of street photography. Ultimately, you'll find your own system and what works for you. Please let me know what you think in the comments and I'll see you next time. To see more of my work, visit my website at www.rupertvandervelle.co.uk and check out my book, Fine Art Street Photography, available at Amazon.